Hey guys, welcome back to another Tech Tip Tuesday. As you know, we just got back from Rocky Mountain Race Week and that's the ultimate test of a car's durability and the build of it as a whole. Uh, so it gave us a lot of ideas for Tech Tip Tuesdays, which is great because I know a lot of our customers are building dual purpose street strip cars, even just race cars, the same thing will apply. So I figured I would touch on it and then hopefully save you guys some uh, heartache as you do Rocky Mountain Race Week or Drag Week or any of those types of races, or you just build a street car that is kind of a dual purpose. Like I said, a lot of people do that. Cooling systems always comes into play when you are building a high horsepower car. Uh, you know, aftermarket cooling systems can be kind of confusing. And I built a little bit of a four part series way back in the day, really rough, <laughs> terrible uh, video quality, but it's there. Go back and check it out on our channel. Uh, have a lot of good tips on it but i figured i would touch on something that i hadn't touched on um, and that is how you run your cooling fans you know rocky mountain race week it was 90 to 100 degrees a lot of humidity a lot of elevation and you know these cars aren't you know when you start piecing cooling system pieces together like i said in other videos uh it's when a lot of people get into trouble not all radiators are made the same not all fans are made the same uh, not all water pumps are made the same and uh mixing all three of them in a way that can cool a 500, 800, 1000, 2000 horsepower car can be a little tricky, especially if you do one build a year or it's your first build or your second build. One thing we ran into on the side of the road, if you watch this clip, we were uh, actually helping Greg or one of our good customers out with uh, some fans. He was driving down the road, His car normally runs like 180 to 190 degrees and it just started elevating temperatures. We pulled over to the side of the road and realized that both fans uh, that he had on his radiator had basically melted slash almost caught fire. The, the wires had gotten so hot they melted. I'm guessing they melted off the contacts inside the fan and the fans locked up slash quit working. And it kind of got me thinking that, you know, I see a lot of people set up their EFI, ECUs um, with different strategies and people get fancy you know, because you can, there's a lot of options out there. And I think um, this is one of those keep it simple, stupid situations where you want to not overthink things. Uh, when we started talking to Greg, his fans weren't optimal for his combo as far as keeping it cool, but luckily he has a big front radiator, so it keeps it relatively cool. Um, and they were just small 800 CFM fans, which is fine. Uh, in as far as setup goes, he had uh, his fans triggering on and off with like a 15 or 20 degree spread. And so, you know, different conditions, different, all that stuff. I think it might even been like a 15 degree spread, but he had one fan come on then he had a second one, then the one would turn off and then, and on and off and on and off again. And what I found in a uh, high horsepower car is once you turn those fans on, there's really no reason to turn them off um, until the car turns off. None of these fans, even these like several thousand CFM each fans are able to cool a car past a point to where it's going to run bad. Um, you know, most of the turbo cars that we build, the fans will knock it down to like 170, 160 degrees cruising. And that's not too cool by any means. And the reason I say don't turn it on and off is just because you have the capability doesn't mean it's a good idea. The hardest um, of then an electric fan or any motor will work is on startup. That's when it's going to see its highest load. Um, it's going to heat the motor up. It's going to have the highest amperage draw. And uh, it's definitely your biggest chance for failure. So if you're turning them on and off a bunch of times, that fan's working extremely hard. When these fans are rated for 10,000 hours or whatever they're rated for, they're rated for continuous duty. These companies aren't turning them on and off, on and off, on and off. And uh, as I've mentioned in other videos, a lot of people don't have a big enough power wire going to the fans anyways. Um, a lot of these fans don't come with big enough power wires in my opinion. And uh, you know, as they start to draw all that current, turning on and off, on and off, you know, they're seeing, some of them are seeing 30, 40, 50 amps peak load on startup. And so if it sees that consistently as it gets, you know, 15 degrees hotter, then it turns off. 15 degrees hotter, it turns off. It is literally just working the fan to death. And that's what happened to Greg's fans. Um, so when he started back up, I was like, listen, when it gets above 160, 170 degrees, just turn the fans on. Um, and then if it gets below that again, it'll turn off, which it never will. And so I guess my point is you can't almost, you're not able to cool these cars off too much driving down the road. So just turn them on and leave them on. 
then you know that they're rated for that type of uh, continuous duty. You're not overworking them, turning them on and off. Uh, it's just a situation, just because the technology is there doesn't mean it's good. Now that might not apply to some of the brushless fans. I haven't really had a chance to use them. Those are gonna have a lot bigger, better ability to turn on and off, just the, the design of a brushless. You know, it has less draw, um, the motors are built differently and stuff like that. But most of us have traditional style brushed motors in our fan setups on our cars. So don't get fancy. Once it's above a certain temperature, say 160 degrees, turn it on and leave it on. It's not gonna cool down too much, I promise you. My Nova runs at like 150, 145, 150 degrees going down the road and it runs excellent. Uh, you might pick up slight amounts of, uh, you know, uh, emissions or thermal gas mileage, whatever you wanna call it, by letting it run a little bit hotter. But you also have to remember, you're not pressurizing these radiators usually like the factory does, and that's why they're able to run hotter temperatures. And there's just no really real reason to run a, uh, a higher temperature going down the road. It leaves you less fail safe. You know, as you get into the mountains, if you're starting at 190, or if you're getting the elevation or working a car, if you start at 190, you know, and it raises 20 degrees, it's getting uncomfortable. If you start at 160 and it goes to 180, whatever. So let those fans run. Don't turn them on and off a bunch of times. Uh, same thing with, you know, any type of pump on your engine. I see a lot of people wanting to PWM their water pump and I'm like, why would you want to do that? It's going to last forever just running, but turning on and off, it's going to decrease its life. So what's the point of it? You're really not accomplishing anything other than being fancy and getting to say, you know, that you have this set up in your ECU and nobody really cares about that when you're broke down on the side of the road. So to be honest with you, um, in my own personal car, I actually just have my fans on a switch. I, now that's because I'm trained to turn it on as soon as the car gets, you know, started up. Uh, and I literally turn them on, you know, a few seconds after I start the car up. It doesn't have a problem warming up. You know, if I was in pure drag race mode, I'd, you know, use that to my advantage to let the car warm up and just run a water pump without fans. But I turn them on basically when I'm going. And then when I stop, I turn them off. So. You know, you can run them off the ECU, you can run them like that, you can run them in tandem so you have both options. Uh, just let them run. Just remember, if you're turning them on and off with a switch, turn them on with a re switch a relay, don't switch the actual straight to the fans because that's a lot of amperage and most switches aren't really, uh, rated for that type of amperage. So use a switch panel with a relay and a bigger power wire and uh, make sure you do it safely because as much amperage as these draw, it will catch a switch on fire, especially a cheapo switch you get at the local parts store. I hope this helps you guys keep it simple. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Definitely drop a comment below if you have some ideas for another Tech Tip Tuesday. As you know, that's how we get our ideas. We will see you guys next time. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button. We'll see you.